G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to go through and show you how to um, level the bed on the Creality K2. Um, from factory this is what my bed came like and it's about one, one millimetre out and after the levelling process I've taken it down to 0.3 of a millimetre. So that's, that's what the end result would be after levelling the bed. So the K2 is a little bit easier to level than the K1 because I don't have to worry about skipping teeth um, and stuff like that. So underneath the K2 bed is, um, you'll see the four screws, and this just puts the bed on a set of springs. Um, so you can use those to um, adjust the bed height, basically. There's not a lot of movement in the springs, but there's enough to get some adjustment. And then a close-up look at the springs under the bed is basically this is what it looks like. So there's a, there's a stopper there, and then there's the spring. So you get a few maybe five millimetres, six millimetres, whatever, of um, adjustment. Uh, there's not much, but there's enough. Um, if you wanted to, you could do like a bed spring upgrade kit like you did on the Enders and stuff like that, but I don't think that's really necessary for this. And um, yeah, we'll just go on with this levelling. So now underneath the K2, the um, you take the bottom plate off and you'll see there's two independent stepper motors for the Z-axis. And what this basically does is there's an optical sensor on either side of the bed for the, uh, next to the lead screw, which the stepper motor is connected to. There's a little tab that will break the optical sensor. So what this basically does is when you boot the printer up, it's going to perform a Z-tilt, and it'll work out what's level by adjusting the screws on either side to get to a certain point where it thinks it's level. So there's no belts involved, no skipping teeth or anything like that, like you had to do with the K1. Leveling this bed's basically going to come back to just using the old paper trick and the nozzle and um, probing on the four corners of the bed. Now to do that, I've had to create a couple of macros, which are on my GitHub. And basically what this is going to do is when you um, put these files into uh, Fluid, uh, you'll be able to click on the macros and it's going to move the head to that location for that macro and it'll probe the bed. And then you can use a piece of paper to adjust the bed to get it to the right, you know, tension on the paper, just like you did with the older printers, the bed slingers. It's the exact same idea, except for you'll be doing it um, this way on the K2. So, okay, let's get the um, files anyway. So we'll just click up here on code and just go download zip. And in this, there's going to be um, a CFG file, and it'll be BL macros. So we want to take that file out, and now we'll go on to Fluid. So obviously, you'll need to know the IP address of your printer. You'll be able to get this off the printer's UI on the touch screen, or you'll be able to get it from the Creality Slicer in the um, Devices tab. It'll give you the IP. And then you go to that IP and then port 4408, like you see up here. Once you uh, go to Fluid, you should be introduced to basically this screen, which we're all familiar with. And then you'll see you've got a bunch of macros here. So what we need to do is we need to add this file to Fluid. So we go down to Configuration, and then in here we want to take this BL Macros file and just drag and drop it. And it'll upload. And now that file's in there, we just want to click on it. And at the very top of it here, I've put this, add this to printer CFG file. So you just want to copy paste this. So highlight it, control C, then just close. Then go on down to printer config here, click on that. And just below box config here, just hit enter and paste, control V. And that'll paste that in. Come over to here to save and restart, and the printer will restart and do its thing. Now it'll probably pop a few errors and do its thing as it's restarting. You just have to be patient with this. Um, it's not as quick as some of the other printers I've had, but it will eventually reboot and then you'll be able to see the macros. Alright, now it's restarted, so we can come up to the Home tab. And in here you're going to see the macros have been added. So now I've named these a little bit weird because I wanted them to become to the top of the uh, list of macros, so they're easy to find. So the idea or here is going to be is you're going to click start. What this will do is it'll um, it'll home the printer, it'll heat the bed, and get everything ready to start probing. 
So when you want to start this bed leveling process, you're going to press start to kick it off. And then um, these are the screws. So left front, left rear, right front, right rear. So as you go through and you're leveling with the piece of paper, you'll click these macros as you do it. And then once you're happy with the distance of the nozzle to the paper, you want to click end complete. Make sure you do this because what this will do is turn the bed heater off and it'll raise the nozzle from the bed and then it'll perform a homing. So that's all fairly simple for you to set up. You don't need root enabled for this. So um, don't worry about enabling root software. This is all purely just um, well within the setup of fluid. So from this point, we need to go to the printer and then um, start doing the leveling process with the piece of paper. All right, at this point, you want to go into the touch screen of the printer. You will know how to do this and you want to home the z-axis. So we'll just home the z-axis. You can home all, it doesn't matter. But what we want to do here is bring the bed up. And this is what I mentioned before, you will see the bed go up and down and this is it performing z-tilt. Okay, now the bed's lifted. Uh, what you want to do is all of these screws that I showed you in the photo before, these are all done up tight, well at least on my printer they are. So you can't screw them up anymore, they're all tight. So with mine, what I did was I backed them off about a full turn. Doesn't have to be exact, but just back them off about a full turn. A little bit more if you want, but once you've backed them off, home the z-axis again. Okay, now you want to go into the fluid UI and at this point I'm just using my phone you want to click start center. Now it'll look like it's not doing anything but what you're waiting for it to do is it's heating the bed. So once it gets to 60 as you'll see there so you click on that one and then you come here to 46, 60 you'll see it. As that gets up to 60 the bed will start to actual move and it'll do its thing. So while it'll appear like it's not doing anything, it is. It gets to about 58 and then it'll start. Now it'll start moving. Sorry for the shaky mobile phone footage. So at this point, it's ready because the nozzle will be touching the bed. So now I'll just be using a piece of paper, whatever type of piece of paper you want to use. And now I'm just going to start off in the front left corner. So I'll press front left or left front. Now it's touching the paper, so we'll just adjust to this. And now I'll go left rear. And adjust that one. Try through there. We'll go right front. Hard to do this with one hand. And then we'll go right rear. Okay, now obviously I'll repeat this a couple of times. Okay, that's good enough for now. So now gone all corners multiple times and happy with the result like I said at this point click end complete so that'll raise the nozzle or lower the bed and then it'll home it and at this point now I'll do another bed mesh and see where we're at with the level so we'll go back to the computer. Alright, now I'm back at my computer. Um, so I want to do a bed mesh now. So I'm going to come down to um, Tune, which is here. And there's the old mesh that I did just before I started the video. So we were 1.01 uh, millimeters out. So now I'm just going to clear the profile and then calibrate. 
if you can't click this calibrate button you have to home all so if it's not clickable click home all but we'll just calibrate and now we'll just wait this takes about five minutes ten minutes or something like that so we'll come back and have a look at what the mesh shows we're back after a bed mesh um, I did have to do the paper leveling trick again because it was a little bit hard to do it with a camera jammed in the side so I went back over it and did it with the paper again and then run another mesh and then this was the end result so 0.35 is where I got to and I'm happy with that it's flatter than it was before so I'll sit with that that's good and of course um, once you've done this mesh and you're happy with it don't forget to click save as so you're saving it and then save it as default and that way it'll save it to the printer and now quickly I'll just explain the macro just in case you want to make uh, changes so in here at the top um, I've got the variable leveling Z offset so this is basically just 0.1 of a millimeter everything here is in millimeters so um, you treat them as millimeters so I've got 0 0.1 of a millimeter and this is basically the thickness of your paper so if you're using something thicker than that um, what it does is it just gives more of a gap between the nozzle and the bed but 0 0.1 is good and then these here are just the positions um, for the probe points where it's uh, moving the head to where it's going to put the nozzle down so I've pulled at 50 millimeters from each corner of the um, the plate you can change that here um, that's up to you so I kind of pulled all of that up to the top here just so you can edit it a little bit easier then instead of going all the way down here and trying to work it out you can just basically edit those points there and yes a lot of people will say you don't need to do this because of auto bed leveling and all of that but uh, mainly here I just like to have the bed as level as possible uh, before I worry about auto bed leveling and um, it's also providing information if someone's bed's way out of whack and they're having problems this is just how you go about leveling it so um, I hope it helps you level the bed uh, just like my K1 leveling um, process that I did it did help me with the K1 and I, as I said I like to have my bed as level as possible so this is how you do it anyway